Some criminals live on the cusp of normal behavior, looking into an abyss of evil below, taking a leap into the dark and committing terrible acts. But while most of these crimes are committed through the evil found in the human heart, others are of a more unearthly nature. Here are 10 sinister criminals with paranormal backstories. Number 10 is Edward Shue. When the body of a West Virginian woman was found at the foot of a staircase in 1897, her death was deemed to be a tragedy, but one brought about through natural causes. Her name was Elva Shue, and she was mourned by her husband. However, Elva's spirit soon revealed that her death was anything but natural. Elva's ghost haunted the dreams of her mother, Mary. Mary watched in horror as the ghastly apparition of her dead daughter twisted her neck at an unnatural angle hinting at some dark secret. When Mary urged the authorities to look closer at the body of her daughter, it was revealed that Elva's neck had been broken by human hands and that her husband, Edward, was the culprit. All of this testimony stood up in court, leading to the prosecution of Edward based on the cries of his wife from beyond the grave. Number nine is William Corder. English couple Maria Martin and William Corder arranged to elope in 1827. They were to meet at the Red Barn, which was an old barn in Suffolk with red clay roof tiles, which was known to them both. After the meeting, William left town and Maria disappeared. William wrote letters to Maria's family, giving them vague reasons why Maria herself could not write to them. Soon after, Maria's stepmother began to have strange feelings about the Red Barn. She became convinced that the spirit of Maria was contacting her and urging her to investigate the building. When investigators followed this information, they discovered Maria's remains buried there. William was soon arrested. When found guilty, he was executed, and then his own remains were used to bind a book about his terrible crime. Number eight is Alan Showry. In 1977, hospital employee Teresita Bass's body was discovered in her Chicago apartment after a fire. After concluding that the fire had been staged to cover up Teresita's murder, investigators found an entry in her diary, which simply read, get tickets for AS. Frustrated by failed attempts to identify who AS was, police were shocked when they received an anonymous call indicating that a man named Alan Shorey was the murderer. When the call was trace, the police spoke with a couple named Jose and Remy Chura. They claimed that Teresita's spirit had possessed Remy several times, conveying to them that Alan Shorey was the murderer. They even knew details of the crime which had never been published, details which led to Alan Shorey's arrest and incarceration. Number seven is Adrian Deo. Adrian Deo lived in Ottawa, Canada and was a known crack dealer. Unfulfilled with his chosen way of life, he cultivated the belief that he should have been a famous rap star. As this delusion took hold, he eventually came to believe that if he took a person's life, that his dreams would come to fruition. And so, in 2010, Adrian Deo murdered a woman named Jennifer Stewart. The murder was unsolved until Adrian came forward in 2013 to confess. The reason for his confession was that after killing Jennifer, he began to see her ghost everywhere. Just moments after the murder, he saw her spirit pass by him, and this led slowly but surely to a religious conversion. When he realized the killing was wrong and that he had to atone for it, he came forward, citing Jennifer's ghost as the reason behind his guilt. Number six is Jose Ferreira. In a similar story to Adrian's case, Wisconsin man Jose Ferreira was arrested 33 years after he committed a murder due to a supernatural intervention. The murder had taken place in 1982 when he pushed a 13-year-old girl called Carrie Ann Jopik down a flight of stairs to her death. Ferreira then buried the body. But despite police investigations, the case remained open. Fast forward 33 years and Jose Ferreira steps forward to confess, not just to the 
the police, but to Carrie Ann Jopik's mother. In his exact words, he stated calmly, your daughter is haunting me. Carrie Ann's mother believes that the spirit of her daughter can now finally rest after the killer came forward, something which he did not confess out of guilt, but rather to stop the chilling apparition of his victim from terrorizing him at night. Number five is Billy Schmidt. The Keepers is a fascinating documentary series which exposed the murder of a nun named Sister Kathy Sesnick, who it is alleged was killed to cover up an abuse scandal at a local school. During the documentary, enthusiasts for the paranormal picked up a chilling detail. One suspect, Billy Schmidt, lived across the hall from Sister Sesnick. His family believes that he was involved, and years later, Billy Schmidt had a breakdown after moving home. He insisted that he was was being haunted by the nun in the attic. When the family entered the attic, they found a mannequin wearing a nun's habit. Was Billy Schmidt being haunted by the spirit of Kathy Sesnick? And was it attached to the mannequin in the attic? Whatever the answer, the image of the nun's outfit in the attic remains mystifying, as well as terrifying in equal measure. Number four is Al Capone. Al Capone is one of the most famous mobsters of all time, but despite his notoriety as an American gangster, it is his connection to the shadowy world of the paranormal which lingers most, in some cases quite literally. Rumors persist that when Capone was first arrested, he would shout out the name Jimmy in fear. He believed that he was being haunted by one of his victims, and his fear grew to such lengths that even in the comfort of his own home, he would be terrorized by the vengeful spirit. Capone's bodyguards would often hear him cry out and then rush in to find him alone in his room. When Capone was sent to Alcatraz, Jimmy followed, never relenting. After his own death, Capone seems to have been doomed to haunt the cell where he spent many years, and you can't help but wonder if Jimmy is still in there with him. Number three is Albert Fish. They say the boogeyman isn't real, but for those who encountered Albert Fish in the early 20th century, they know that evil does exist. Albert Fish was a serial killer who committed a string of detestable crimes in a variety of locations, including Brooklyn. He was originally called Hamilton, but he chose the name Albert for himself later in life, taking on the identity of a sibling who had passed away as a child. He also claimed to hear voices telling him to commit his crimes, and some some have speculated that these voices were somehow involved with the taking of the sibling's name, that he was possessed by something malevolent which hated life so much that it had to feed upon it. Reading about Fish's crimes, it's difficult not to think that his actions lacked all humanity and perhaps were driven by something demonic instead. Number two is Terry Childs. Terry Childs was a serial killer in Santa Cruz. After killing a man and woman named Christopher Hall in Joan Mack on a beach, Childs walked away without being caught. More than three decades later, Childs finally confessed to his terrible crimes. His reason, like many on this list, was that a sinister paranormal force had entered his life. He was being haunted and stalked not by just one, but by two spirits, those of his victims. Having already been incarcerated for other murders, he pleaded with his jailers to let him out of his cell so that he could confess and end his torment. Each night while he lay alone in his jail cell, the spirits of his dead victims would taunt him, scaring him so badly that he decided to do the unthinkable, to confess to the crimes and stop the spirits in his cell from, in his own words, Words, eating away at his brain. And number one is Lee Harvey Oswald. Lee Harvey Oswald is infamous for assassinating John F. Kennedy in 1963. All manner of theories have been presented about Oswald, but one which is lesser known is that ghostly forces were involved in his crimes. Everyone has heard of the second gunman, the idea that there was another shooter present who killed Kennedy, but one theory speculates that occult forces invoked a supernatural entity to finish the president off. The reason given is that a secret society 
who controls the world's leaders from behind the scenes realized that Kennedy could not be bought. For fear of hiring an assassin who could be caught and confess, they manipulated Oswald into attempting the assassination and used their occult rituals to fire the killing shots. This of course seems outlandish, but then again, so does much surrounding the assassination of that president.